to Drunk Talk on Damn Drunk Clinics with Dan Schindler as your lovely host. Insightful interviews with drunk manufacturers and retailers from all over the world. Brought to you in part by Drunk Drummers and Drumming. Today's guest is Rip Goodlock. Hi, I'm Dan Schindler. Thank you so much for joining me here on Dan's Drum Clinics, another edition of Drum Talk, this time with Rick Medlock, all the way from Coventry, England. And we're going to talk about a few things just to give you a little bit of background from this young man from England. Uh, he toured with Big John Wrencher back in the day, and I do mean back in the day. He'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, soul legend Ben E. King he drummed for as well. Uh, Rick is a drummer of many different styles. He also played uh, with the good time Lemington Rockers, The Mosquitoes. He also was in Willie Russell's award-winning production, Blood Brothers with Barbara Dixon. A lot of great stories here from this young man, but the biggest focus I'd like us to all sit back and listen to from Rick is that he took a 30-year absence from playing the drums. Let, let me just say that again. I'm getting goosebumps saying it. 30 years away from playing the drums, and here he is back again at 59, getting back into the groove, back into the swing, back into being the backbone for other musicians. And first of all, Rick, welcome, and thank you so much for joining me on a Sunday. I really appreciate it. Hello, <laughs> all the I'm way. I'm here. Woo, I'm back. Yeah. There's Rick, everybody. So I got to ask you, so what happened one day? Did you just get tired of guitar players showing up with no battery in their wah-wah pedal or a girlfriend drama with the band? What happened? Us drummers tend to be a second-class citizen, don't we? Um, no, I mean, um, I just, I'd sort of got where I got and didn't really want to be there, I think. That was the, 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 the crux of it. Um, plus the lifestyle, um, I tended to live the rock and roll lifestyle and that was making a bit of a mess of my health. Huh. And I've, I've never heard of that one before. <laughs> Sorry? I've never heard that one before. I know. <laughs> Funny that, isn't it? Yeah. Um, it just, yeah, I just, I just lost my way with it. I, I just didn't want to be doing this and I couldn't see a way of, of getting out of it or getting where I thought I wanted to be. Um, and so I was having this sort of internal fight. I was living in London at the time, and I didn't want to be in London, uh, working in West End theatres. Um, and, and the work was there, um, but I didn't want to be in London. Uh, my wife at the time didn't want to be in London. Um, and I just thought, I just don't want to be doing this anymore. So um, I just stopped completely, sold everything, and just didn't listen to music for probably the first 10 years. I was completely shut it off completely. So cutting off that part of your brain almost put a part of you, uh, I'm asking actually, it, it, did it put a part of you that was so much you into almost like a monk-like state where you just you just put up that wall and shut it off and didn't have anything to do with it? What was that like? I sort of, I have one of these um, personalities that it, it sort of, it, it came in stages. And I basically stopped and went and worked in a factory uh, for about four months and thought, no, 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 <laughs> this is not good. I don't like this. This is not what I want to be doing. So I, um, I, I, because, of, because of my lifestyle, I'd started looking after myself. So I was doing a bit of running and um, I, I got an injury and I was referred to this, uh, this, this guy in London. Um, and he turned out to be a, a massage therapist. Um, anyway, he sort of worked on my legs, and, and I couldn't believe the difference. And being me, that was it. Right, oh, I've got to know how to do that. That looks like a groovy way of earning a living. It's got to be better than working in a factory, and that's doing my head in. I've only been there four months. So um, I got on a training course um, and built a sort of 30-odd-year career doing that. Yeah, as a massage therapist, right? Sorry? As a massage therapist? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So wow. I just started doing, I think it took me about five years to get established. Because by that time, I did my initial training in London and then moved back to Coventry, which is where I live now. Um, when I started this, most people would um, treat it with a bit of suspicion. Uh, massage wasn't something, remember, we're going back 30 odd years here. Um, wasn't something that people would choose it's not part of british culture it's not what we do I've, somebody put hands on one another it's not what we do right yeah the british aren't exactly touchy feely people are they exactly we tend to be 
or um, I don't know what the word is. I can't think of it. Standoff times, anyway. So it was it was difficult. Um, at that time, I got a, a guy that was um, one of the top athletes at the time. And there was this thing called the Great Race, which was a, a running race from, where was it, from Glasgow to London. Run a bit of the tour of France with, with stages and one thing and another. And I got the job. He just said, do you want to do this? And I said, yeah, great. You know, at this time, I got a part-time job. I'd moved back to Coventry. Um, my daughter had been born by this time. Um, and I got a three-week job looking after, I think it was about 200 athletes with just wow. this pair. Um, it didn't. It didn't really pick up in the, in Britain, but it did in the States. The, the American TV were going nuts for it. So um, overnight, I went from scratching around and living to being on TV every night. Then the national was picked up on it, and then it, it's just you know one thing after another. A bit like how my music thing started. It was just I want to do this, and then I just managed to get a break, and then edged my way in, and off we went. So that then went on to do like I say, I've toured. Um, most of Europe and down into Japan. I've been to the States uh, working with professional athletes or more professional dancers. So that was it. I just sort of switched off. That's it. I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm not going to listen to any music, but still, in a, in a strange way, still involved in the arts, you know, because it's, um, it's, it's, well, as the science of it, it's all an art. And working with like professional dancers is, is also art. Not so right. sure about it, actually, but, you know, whatever. Right. Well, I'm curious. I, I want to ask you, um, before we focus on what it's like coming back from that playing, just real briefly, could you please describe, you know, what was it like being around 20 in your early 20s, like in the early to mid 70s? Um, what was it like playing out and being part of the London music scene back then, even, you know, at whatever level you were at then? What was it like? And what was it like? compared to now and and kind of briefly describe that if you could because i want to see the main focus for this big comeback that you're doing i think the um, the difference is there was a lot more a lot more gigs about for a kickoff there was a lot more work about it. you could pretty much go to any pub uh, in commentary on on a weeknight or a weekend night and there'd be something on right. um there was uh, my uncle was a musician johnny medlock he was an organist and he um used to have a little combo just a duo um so I'd, I'd got my drum kit, and uh, this would be what I'd be then. I'd be 18, um, and just sort of, you know, was egging him all the time. Can, you, can I get on and have a play? Well, you know, you're not good enough. You've only just got a kit. But, you know, 18, you think you know it all. I thought I was great. Got up and did a couple of numbers, made a complete fool of myself. and thought, oh, right, OK, there's obviously a bit more to this than that, then. <laughs> just the fact who, who the, the best instructor was in commentary and had uh, private lessons for two years. So the same way as with, with the massage, it was like, this is what I want to do. This is how I'm going to do it. Um, then played in a, a few bands, um, you know, just, just learning the ropes, basically. Right. And then um, I, I joined a band with a guy called Chris Jones, who, who, was, who was, comes up later in the story when I come back, um, who got this uh, three-piece called Kayam. Um, uh -huh. It was sort of, again, gigs were easy to come by. So we were doing pub gigs, universities, um, anything we could get hold of. And it was during that time that um, we got the um, the gig. The first gig was, I think the first tour was with Benny King. Uh, that was just a scratch band. We, they just put a band together, did the tour. Didn't really get, like that, if I was honest. Didn't get on with uh, Mr. King. Uh, we didn't see eye to eye. Um, um, finished that one and then uh, went off and did with Big John Rencher. And Big John Rencher was just amazing. I mean, <laughs> this, as, a, as a way of looking at this, uh, um, we had to go to Leeds, which is the, the sort of top end of Britain. Uh, so we're at centre. So it's like uh, in those days, I think we still got, we had got the motorway, but it was, uh, you know, a day's journey. Got to be there for two o'clock. Arrived at two o'clock, uh, set up. No Big John Rencher. Um, so at five to seven, we're on at seven. He turns up. So um, I go in. So I've been nominated by the other two to um, see what we're doing. And I say to him, you're supposed to have been here at, um, at two o'clock. It's now seven. You know, what are we going to do? And he turns around to me and he goes, I can't do my American accent. Boy, he said, you don't play the blues, you feel it. And I said, right, OK, fine. So I went out, told the other two guys, um, we did our opening set, and 
he just came on, um, got his harmonica, he blew a chord to the, the bass player, chord to the guitarist, turned around to me, stamped the four, one, two, three, four, and two hours plus later we came off. Oh, that's just, awesome. And that was, was what it was like. There was none of this weeks of rehearsing and stuff. It was yeah. very much, if you've got this job, you're expected to know what you're doing. Yeah, and music was had a lot more room for free form and yeah, I mean, and stuff very, like uh, that. Regimented, but I think that the whole scene was like that. You could literally go in anywhere and, and sit on a stool. And of course, then I mean, some of the drummers that were about. There's a guy I did do a search for him, see if he was still about. A guy called Martin Fisher, who was um, a local drummer. He was just incredible, one-handed rolls and all that sort of stuff. He he was yeah. already. Um, and sort of sitting in with him every night and watching him play and, and going on and making a fool of myself. And then where do you go wrong? and having him put your right sort of there and then? It's a, it's a great learning experience. You know, you don't see like, like locally now, you, if you can find somewhere where they're doing something similar, um, it tends to be guys that have been practicing in the bedroom as a group. They turn up, get on stage, play a bit and then go. You know, there's right. none of this sort of, well, we'll just... Bunch of you get up. Do you know this song? What 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 keys it in and do it? You know, yeah. Which is a learning experience. So let me ask you this. Yeah. So fast forward and all this time goes by. You know, you you live a different sort of professional life. What what was the impetus of what happened when you said, right, I'm gonna play drums again? How did that come about? Uh well, <laughs> a bit like the drumming, I've sort of got to the end with, with my massage. Um, I've sort of been to the top of that career and all the way back down again. So I was working with um, Birmingham Royal Ballet, which is one of the top dance companies in this country. Um, I took a redundancy, um, went to college originally, uh, 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 yeah, originally to do a, um, a course on photography, which is my other sort of passion. Um, I then went to university uh, and studied it for uh, two years and two months of a three-year degree and just thought, this is not for me. This is not happening. You know, I just right. I don't like what you're teaching me. I don't feel I'm learning anything. It's not for me. So I pulled myself off the course. So I'm now at home thinking, what am I going to do with myself? And uh, as life has always done with me, the phone rings and it's Chris Jones. Oh, from way back when come and play drums Chris I haven't played for 30 years I can't find anybody that can do to do this and I know you can do it so he sort of talked me into doing it wow. Uh, wow we've got one gig all I want to do we've got four rehearsals we've got one gig just come out and do it you know don't bother about the drum kit you can borrow you want anything I just want to do this gig um, and this was supporting a band called Chevy who um, were doing their reunion tour <laughs> so we're all of a similar age 60s and late 50s uh -huh. um, go off to the first rehearsal and really struggle through it. Um, and I've got a little um, Roland R05, so I've taken that along and I'm recording it. Um, by about the third rehearsal, I'm, I'm listening to it whilst I'm doing the house cleaning on the headphones. And I'm thinking, actually, Rick, because you haven't played that for all these years, that ain't half bad, you know. And what kind of music was it? What kind of music are we talking here? Um, it was, uh, the description we came in was uh, funk blues, or blue okay. funk. Okay. Oh, nice. So we were taking classic blues numbers, but doing them, um, just basically taking the structure, but making it slightly more funky and, and messing around with it. Um, gotcha. So, oh, well, yeah, you know, that's not bad. <laughs> Did the gig and uh, you know that was it the, the fuse had been lit <gasps> oh 
it's been a long time since I've done that. You know, just the nerves. Yeah. Actually, on a kit I've never played before. Uh, and the guy I was <laughs> kit I was using called Ted Duggan, who's um, probably one of your top rock drummers, certainly in this area. Ted's been around for years, great drummer. Um, and to sort of get on his kit and play in front of him, plus all the Chevy crowd. And we went down reasonably well. We, sort of, we, we munched our way through it, you know. But that yeah. was it. <gasps> you know, drums. So right. I came up to my wife and said, uh, Sheila, I'm thinking of uh, buying a drum kit. Ah, uh, right, well, no, you're like, it's pointless asking me, because you, you will do what you're going to do anyway. <laughs> well, I, got, I said, I'll go and have a look at them. So I pulled off to a great shop. We've got a great shop in a place called Leamington, which is a side commentary. Um, I've been given this, this guy's name by, by Chris, who was the guitar player with Chris right. Jones band. Right. And uh, he said, go and ask for Vic and say that I've sent you along and he'll see you all right. So I went in to buy a little three, three piece and came out with two grand's worth of kit. I got this on special offer. Uh, oh, it's just beautiful matte black, uh, limited edition, last one. Uh, that's it. I'll have it. So, and that was it. Then um, the, the Chris Jones thing didn't work. Um through playing with champion support, um, I got to know uh, a guy called Bob Paul, who's the motivator, and Baz Erdley, they're both from Chevy, uh, and Ted was with them at the time. Ted had left them to do other things, and I've, I've since joined them and a couple of other bands, and it's just sort of snowballed, you know. I've right, done, right. I just work at it all the time, love it. So I'm back. Awesome, that's great. And we're gonna pop a quick clip in of you playing with them. Check this out, everybody. sounds like you like it took no time at all Rick to find your groove and just you know there you know about muscle memory and there's a different sort of muscle muscle memory in the brain I believe too and um, when they say it's like riding a bike I think once you're a musician and especially a drummer is probably it's got to be the most kinesthetic instrument because we use all our you know limbs we we when we play with feel we truly are playing with feel you know our our physical movements ebb and flow and give and take and i think your brain just sort of remembered all that because the, the playing is great your feel is there it's like it's like i would never know that you didn't play for 30 years somewhere in between it's really cool to see that i think that the, 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 the most difficult part at first was is, is the brain goes oh yeah but then oh <laughs> the coordination factor the idea of riding the bike because that's what other people say oh it's just like riding a bike rick it'll come back well it, well it did but it hasn't come back without a lot of work on average um i've just had a week off and this is the longest i've had off since i started in it was october last year oh. so no it'll, it'll be two two years this october since since i started back i do on average uh, an hour to two hours to four hours practice a day just on stick exercises. Uh, it uh -huh. wasn't so much about, it's, it, I could hear it in here, but it was getting getting this to do it. Yeah. So as you rightly point out, it's getting the muscle memory working again. Um, plus, because I've worked as a massage therapist all these years, I've, my hands, um, I have problems with my wrists and hands. Uh -huh. uh, spent a small fortune um, with uh, an osteopath. Mm -hmm. uh, doing a lot of work on my arms because I couldn't extend my arm. I've used it, I don't know if you can see this on, in a massage you're using it in a very sort of straight but slightly bent position to get right. the pattern. 
Well, the muscle memory is that. So to do this or to stretch it or to flick the wrist or the fingers don't work because they used to be in a static position. So yeah. a lot of the exercises, you know, the stick stick control is just sitting there and getting all this, the memory back into it to get it to work. You've been working so, on getting your mobility and your dexterity back is really what it comes down one to. One reason right? I've gone for the three kit and ended up with the, what I've got, you know, because yeah. all of us, hang on, I've got to be able to turn around here, you know, and, <laughs> which was a, a big um, a decider um, why I didn't buy a, a fixed bass drum, uh, a fixed tom-tom on the, on the rack right. because I get it lower. Um, yeah. I, I wouldn't be able to sort of start playing up here. I did right. three rooms at a, a bit of a a bit of a um, a bit of a jam session, three really fast rock numbers, which I, I sort of sailed through reasonably well, and then for two days couldn't move. I mean, it, the whole upper body just spasm, ache, pain. Oh, I was in a nervous state. So that's that's been the biggest thing is is getting that back. The brain, the rhythm is is all there. I don't have any problems with that. It's just getting getting things to work. Right. So let me ask you this before we go. What? And first of all, I, again, I think it's such a great story. And I tell people all the time, like you're taking a week off right now. And I tell people all the time, yeah, it's good to step back. Maybe not 30 years, but because so I mean, it's quite a story. But now you're back and you're playing. We'll call it two years even right now. We're into September. It's September 2nd as we're filming this. Um, what has it done for you? Uh, n not to get too esoteric, but what has it done for you spiritually or for your psyche and physically too? What what have you been getting out of coming back and playing for two years after not it's playing for three years? I've spent uh, a lot of the last 30 years pretty much working on my own because uh, you, you're very insular. You're very one, on a one-to-one. -one. Even if you're working at some of the events, which is like a mash tent, there's just bodies everywhere, you're still very much concentrated on what you do which is what you do in drumming as well but in that situation you've got everybody else to to be thinking about tempos and all the rest of it and in our own way conducting what we do um from a confidence point of view um i think that the biggest yeah i suppose the biggest fright factor is actually getting on a stage and doing it isn't it yeah. <laughs> i haven't been years you're going to do this uh, somebody said to me um <laughs> just as I was going, another friend of mine who's, uh, is, who I played with again 30 years ago and is still playing. Um, have you been to the toilet yet? <laughs> are you? <laughs> are you? <laughs> what are you? What do you think I am? You know, what I am? That's yeah, funny. I mean, it's just, uh, you know, it's the buzz, isn't it? You get it up is. there. It's, it is. It, it's a great feeling. It's a bit that sort of dropped off a little bit. Now I'm sort of getting used to it. But the first night we get a, you know, uh, you're just doing a couple of pubs and we did a, a fairly big um, festival the other week and there's, you know, three or four thousand people there instead of your 30 people that you're playing to. <laughs> and anticipation that you sort of don't get as a massage therapist, you know. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's a different sort of, it's a different sort of stress. So uh, in myself, I feel a lot better. I actually love doing what I'm doing. Again, you know, all, all the love I had when I first started 30 years ago that I lost... I've sort of regained it again, you know. That's awesome. You know, this is that's that's so good. Great. I mean, it's such a good story. It's just such to me. It's such a feel good story. And you know, I love doing these interviews with different people about different things because we can all learn from each other's perspectives. And on Dan's Drum Clinics, you will see interviews from people of all different levels, all different styles, all different sociological and cultural backgrounds from all over the world. And if you have an open mind to learning, it's not always at the drum kit. It's sometimes like this and talking to people like Rick and yourselves out there as well. Everyone's got a story. We are all made up of our own experiences and we have a lot to share. And I think it's so fun to just listen to other people's perspectives and, you know, be able to learn from them. And I really, really appreciate you coming on and, and sharing your story. Um, you're welcome to come back on again sometime and, you know, give us a progress report of of where you're at with it now you know sometime in the future but thanks for coming on so much it's it's really been great especially on a sunday thank your wife for me as well <laughs> she's sitting downstairs i think <laughs> right.
Great. Well, thanks for coming on, Rick, and all of you joining me. Please keep checking back. You can check Rick out at the information on the screen. Tap into what he's doing. And thanks for joining me here on Drum Talk on Dan's Drum Clinics. Thanks.